Awesome. Awesome. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Actually, first off, I introduced myself. That was rude. I would love to hear from you all as well. So um, please, so I'll, I'll kind of pick the first person. I know it can be kind of awkward to know where to go. So uh, I'll just select the first person, introduce yourself, uh, your name, pronouns, um, where you're from, and uh, then you can select the next person that goes along your screen and hopefully we cover everyone. So I'm gonna start with Andrew. You're the first one in my upper left. Uh, I'm Andrew, I'm a sophomore at CC. <clears throat> I'm currently in Alpharetta, Georgia. And um, is there anything else? Um, what is something you hope to take away from today's presentation? Um, I think I had several questions written down somewhere, but uh, I was wondering if like outdoor ed basically funds like students to go pursue the outdoors, whether if it's through a summit or their personal endeavors. Great. I'm going to write that down and we'll try and cover our Q and A's at the end because some of those I might address as we proceed. So thank you, Andrew. Who would you like to select next? Um, Cassia. I'm Kasha. Um, I am a freshman of pronouns, she, her, hers. Um, and I'm just super excited about the outdoor opportunities here and I want to learn more. It's like one of the reasons why I chose this school. It sounded really cool. So I just want to know everything that's going on. Awesome. Kasha, who would you like to select next? Um, Eve. Yeah, I'm Eve. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I am at CC right now because I'm a freshman, but I most recently from Tucson, Arizona. And I guess my primary goal is to just like learn how I can as someone who has basically no like outdoor experience, like enter into that world of like CC outdoors and athletics. You know, it's like I... I meet all these people here and they've like been doing these things for years so it's hard to know like where to begin as someone who just like doesn't know anything. Eve, thank you so much. Who would you like to select next? Um, I'll do William. Hi, I'm William. I'm also a freshman. I use the he series of pronouns. Um, I'm from Philadelphia. And I am excited to learn more about the outdoor areas around and in Colorado Springs and how best to explore them. Cool. Thanks. And I'll go with uh, Jessa next. I'm Jessa. I'm a sophomore. I use she, her, her pronouns. And I just want to find out like more of the things around Springs that are fun to do outdoors. I think this is a good time to get into that and I just feel like there must be things I don't know yet. Cool. And I think that leaves us with Fabio. Uh, hi, so I'm Fabio. I use he, him, his. Um, I'm also a freshman. I'm from the Bay Area and I'm kind of hoping to learn more about like how outdoor stuff will look like this year specifically and then also just learn more about um, parks and other areas around Colorado Springs. Awesome. Thank you all. This, this really helps. Um, I did review a lot of the, the questions that you submitted when you registered. Um, I think that we'll, we'll definitely touch upon everything, whether it's in the presentation or kind of Q&A at the end. Um, if you have questions throughout, I, I've got a slideshow um, which will kind of help guide the conversation, but I'd rather have a conversation. If there's questions you have throughout, let's, let's address those. Um, if you know, uh, Jessa, you're, you're a second year, so maybe you've been to some of these places before, and if you have any insights that you want to share from your experiences, or if we talk about activities that some of you particularly like, or you've never done, and you're really excited to learn how to get more involved in that specific, let's just have a conversation about it. Let's make it fun. Um, I know y'all are, have been, and will continue to be screen time as more than anyone ever really wants. And so let's, uh, let's try to enjoy it the best we can. 
And hopefully from this presentation, we can help you feel more empowered to um, specifically around the Colorado Springs area, how you can, can get out and recreate and enjoy being away from your computer at any possible time that you can. So um, again, Rachel Abler, Assist Director with Outdoor Education. I oversee the um, Alberg Leadership Institute, which is our trip leader training development program. So if leading trips is something that is of interest to you, whether it's now because you're raring to go or down the road because you wanna first learn some skills and, and develop uh, kind of those uh, humanistic and leadership uh, skills, we would love to have you and we would love to have those conversations. Um, I also oversee our gear house, which is our equipment rental center, our bike and ski co-op uh, to maintain bikes and skis uh, and our winter programming efforts. So let's jump into it. Screen share. Awesome. When you're, uh, when you're leading a Zoom meeting, all these little things pop up on your screen and they block all the buttons that you need to actually push. So uh, there we go. All right, so we wanna talk about finding your own adventure in the Springs. As I mentioned when we started, what adventure is up for everyone to define for themselves. Uh, I mentioned it might be being outside, reading a book, setting up in a hammock, or maybe it's climbing that beautiful peak that we have in our backyard, um, anywhere in between. And so I want to give you some of the local options, especially given current times with COVID that transportation is challenging. And so what can we, how can we take advantage of our really close by uh, recreation opportunities uh, and make the most out of it? So we'll talk about local parks, things that we can do there, how you can prepare for going, and then how you can go about getting there. Um, so yeah, this is our backyard. Um, I, I, when I, when I do drive into work, I'm currently at home right now, but when I do drive into work, I see this beautiful view. We're, we're in a prime spot in our location on campus that for many of us, you can just walk around on the quad and look up and see some of these spectacular views. Um, we have a pretty mild weather, uh, here in Colorado Springs where the winters can be pretty mild. The summers can get quite hot, but uh, for the most part, you're year round able to recreate in almost all sorts of different outdoor activities. So as far as our um, total land and, and access, we are so, so lucky that the El Paso County and Colorado Springs region um, loves to, to take advantage of the, the great spaces that we have. So 9,000 acres of parkland and 5, 000, or 500 acres of trails. Um, and then it's really cool how diverse the landscape is that we have around us. And I'll give you some, uh, some images of that to help inspire you if you haven't had a chance to explore around yet. And then all of our urban uh, parks, open spaces and commuter trails. Um, the city is working tirelessly all the time uh, to, to enhance these infrastructures. Uh, a lot of the construction that you see, if you've been around the outskirts of campus right now, they're doing some road work and curbs and, uh, and they're changing lanes so that it's more bicycle friendly. Um, and so that's just great. It's great to see those changes and we get to benefit from them. So here are some of those visuals that I promised you. So we've got some forested foothills of North Cheyenne Canyon, which is on kind of the Southwest side of town. Um, and I'll, I'll have lots of maps that'll uh, help orient you to the location. Bear Creek Regional Park is an amazing location. Um, this, we'll show you in a map, but this is kind of like the, the entrance to so many different parks. If you can get to uh, Bear Creek Reg Regional Park, you can easily access many other parks just by traveling through it, which is pretty cool. Um, Ute Valley is also another one of those. Uh, this is more inner Colorado Springs, kind of north Colorado Springs. Uh, but it's it's really cool mixture of this arid, deserty, but alpine feel with the trees that you see here. And then um, super cool rock formations with our Shearwald Canyons of Red Rock Canyon open space. You can see these these just you know rock, fins of rock just jutting out of of the ground. Um, and also we have that at Garden of the Gods Park. Um, very iconic location here in our region, um, which as you can see here, can be a lot of fun. Uh, you can do rock climbing, 
all sorts of activities and all these different parks that we have. Um, mountain streams, North Cheyenne Canyon, um, you know, because we are at the, in the foothills and we have those mountains behind us when we get a, a great rainstorm or snow melt, uh, it's really neat to kind of see all the different places that the water can come down. Um, and of course, all these super cool, unique rock formations that just by over the years of, of wind and erosion, um, they kind of make some of these cool hoodoo type features, which is neat. Uh, Pulpit Rock um, and the Austin Bluffs open space. Uh, this location you can see right along I-25. Uh, if you've come in from the north uh, down to Colorado Springs, if you look up, if you're along 25 and you look just to the east, you can see this, this pulpit, as it's well named, uh, Pulpit Rock uh, kind of sticking out uh, just on the north side of UCCS campus. Um, and yeah, some more of those cool rock formations with um, Red Rock Canyon open space. And it's just the colors, you know, the seasons as they change, it's really beautiful um, in this location. Uh, we have expansive grasslands and scenic mesas. So the further east you go, um, there's a lot of open space areas that are, um, you lots of really cool creatures. And the further away you get from the mountain, you actually can kind of see the mountain more, which is pretty neat. And then, yeah, Sonderman Park is, this is actually the closest um, like outdoor, non-urban community park that we have to campus. Um, and actually, it's kind of a, a little a little hidden gem. Um, not very many folks that I know of have, have traveled to Sonderman Park. It's kind of off the beaten path, but it's actually super close, uh, close by to us. Um, one of our, she's a recent alum, uh, but very involved with our program. Uh, she loves to go birding. Uh, and she says that Sonderman Park is one of the top places in, in, in the region to, to check out all sorts of different birds. So that's pretty fun. And then we have our neighborhood parks. So like America the Beautiful. Um, so, and there, this, if you're familiar with the uh, U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Museum that's being built. Uh, this is right next door to that. And this is just south of campus. You can take one of our paved greenway trails uh, to get you down to America the Beautiful Park. So uh, Monument Valley, this is literally just on the other side of the El Pomar Sports Complex. So just on the, just to the west of uh, the creek, Monument Creek. And then Memorial Park and Prospect Lake. So again, all of these locations that I have just shown you are within 30 to 45 minute walk, bike ride, 10 minute car ride. Um, and then all the urban trails that uh, connect all of these elements together. Uh, Santa Fe Trail runs up along um, north south along Monument Creek. And this actually goes all the way up to Monument and, and beyond. Um, the Santa Fe Trail, I did, I'm not, I'm not the most, I'm not known to be an endurance athlete, but uh, I did a, a 50 mile, so a half century bike ride, and I wanted to stay on um, kind of greenway trails the whole time. I, I'm not interested in riding along roadways. And so from Monument to uh, Fountain, I was able to connect just in one straight shot, a 50 mile uh, stretch. And so it's, it's great to know that you can be in the city, but not feel like you're in the city. And you can get quite a lot of distance if that's something that is of interest. All right. So um, I just talked, I gave you a lot of, a lot of visuals. Now let's try and piece together where some of these locations are. So the first circle here is Red Rock Canyon open space. Um, North Shine Canyon is kind of in the bottom of uh, the Southwest. Sonderman Park and Monument Valley Park, right there in the center. If you can see, can you see my mouse when I'm moving it? Okay. Um, Colorado College is like right here. Nevada, yeah, Nevada, right, right about here. So super, super close by. Uh, then we also have Palmer Park to the northeast and Memorial Park to the south east. And do I have one more on here? Yep, and then Garden of the Gods. Um, some of the other uh, parks that I had mentioned, like Ute Valley is up here, uh, further northwest, uh, and Bear Creek connects right in here. That's where I was talking about, is if you, can get, if you get to here, you can connect from Bear Creek, 
to section 16, can get you in depth, you can connect down to North Shine Canyon, you can connect into Red Rock Canyon open space and just kind of hop, skip and a jump up to Garden of the Gods. That'd be a pretty epic day, um, but it's, it's cool to know that, okay, maybe one time you come and explore this area and then you're feeling up to going a little bit further. You can explore this area, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's just super neat how they're all interconnected. All right. So what to do in all these different places. Um, many of the parks will all feature very similar activities, hiking, so, you know, walking, um, biking, whether you want to road bike or mountain bike, um, you know, all sorts of different difficulties. Um, I enjoy mountain biking, but I, I, I don't like adrenaline very much. So I tend to avoid some of the, the more technical areas, but there are a lot of really great trails and the parks that I mentioned, I'll go back a screen. Um, for mountain biking, for example, Red Rock Canyon Open Space and Palmer Park are both really great mountain biking locations. And they have very entry level to Double Black Diamond is the more kind of technical side of things. Uh, and then in North Cheyenne Canyon as well, you have a lot of, a lot of elevation. If you, if you put in the work to get up there, um, there's a, it's a really flowy, fun ride to get all the way down. So. Um, yeah, paddling, climbing, um, fishing, whether that's rod fishing or fly fishing, um, you know, talk about reading a book or watercoloring or journaling. Maybe you just want to go outdoors and, and take a nap, you know, it's just, it's good for the soul, especially right now when so many of us are stuck indoors more than we'd like to be, uh, with the screens in front of us, just, just going for a nice walk nearby. All right. Um, so we talked about, but there's, there's lots of other activities you can do as well. You know, skateboarding, snowshoeing, fat biking in the winter, cross country skiing, um, paddling, you, there's stand up paddleboarding. We have a lot of great reservoirs. Um, swimming is not something that we can do a lot of, uh, a lot of the big areas of water. Um, those are reservoirs. Those are our drink. That's our drinking water. Uh, so they, they frown upon us going into the drinking water. You can paddle on it. Uh, if you're standing up paddle boarding, you happen to fall in, you're able to get back on. Uh, but it's, it's not, we don't really have many like swim beach locations. There are a few, um, but if swimming something that's up your alley, there are a couple places that have community pools as well. All right. Um, and then as far as like, okay, I'd like to try some of these activities, but I don't have the gear. Or I don't know how to do it. Um, that's where our program comes in as well. Uh, we host trips throughout the year. Uh, trips this year are going to look a little bit different. Uh, we're actually going to be doing a majority of our trips fairly local and going to a lot of these locations, but we're still planning on doing climbing trips and paddling trips and hiking trips. Um, and then if you, there are things you want to do on your own, uh, the Alberg Gear House is an amazing resource. Um, we're not open yet. I need to wait for my returning staff to come back to to college so that we can staff the gear house. Um, but if you need equipment, you need clothing, you need boots, you want to rent a first aid kit because you're going somewhere that's a little, little further than you've been before and you want to be prepared, um, all of those things. And I've got some slides about that, um, that we'll get there. All right. I'm going to pause real quick. Does anyone have any questions thus far? Uh, any things that I can clarify, expand on? They're going too fast. Y'all feeling good? Feeling good? I just wanted to say thank you. I just realized I have a Zoom at four and I have to go, but thanks for oh, <laughs> the presentation. No. Yeah, no problem. Uh, it'll be recorded and I'll send additional links uh, out to you so that you can catch up on the things that you missed. Okay, thanks. Cool. Bye. All right. So we will continue to give you a little more insight on specific areas that I highlighted previously. So Monument Valley Park, these are just some images of all the different, it's a, it's a really great community park. This is the one that runs parallel along uh, Monument Creek and I-25, uh, right next to campus. Lots of great green spaces, playgrounds. Um, they're, there's, they're, they have a, a fairly, um, I don't call it, say aggressive, but very determined um, pickleball league. People are very, very serious about their pickleball. Um, and that's in Monument Valley. 
Um, so you can see kind of what's in the northern portion and the southern portion. Um, again, Colorado College's location, and then Monument Valley Creek, Monument Valley Park goes all the way up here. And there's, there's great, um, on one side, there's paved, and on the other side, it's um, gravel. So if you'd like to trail run or want to get a morning run in before class or after class, um, you are able to, to um, you know, whether you want more of the road feel or you want kind of that, that trail experience. Um, I see a hand raised. Yes, Andrew, what's up? Yeah, uh, how far are CC students allowed to like go in terms of distance from campus? Um, I, I don't know that there are any official restrictions to my knowledge. You, you folks might be a little more um, in tune to that than I am. I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of there being any current restrictions as far as how far you can travel. Um, I know it's discouraged that you go you know, out of county or out of state to areas that are of, of higher um, you know, current COVID situations. Um, so what I was focusing on today mostly is what's within our, you know, within, within the county, uh, El Paso County, and really within mostly greater Colorado Springs. Um, but I'd have to look into that a little bit more to see if there are any specific restrictions. Um, I, not to my knowledge, but things are changing all the time. And so if, if there is something, Andrew, I'll find out and I can pass that along. Does anyone know of anything more? E, yeah. But how do students normally get to these parks? Do they just like use public transport? Yeah, no, that, those are great question. Um, yes, in it's a combination of kind of doing your own thing, um, signing up for a program that outdoor education has, um, or you know connecting with others that are also thinking about doing that. Of course, that third option. Um, is not going to be as encouraged as much. It doesn't mean that we're saying go out and venture on your own, but we want to be sure that we're doing it responsibly. Um, and so you can you can hike in a group of people as long as it's folks that are, have been within your cohort, um, as long as you know everyone has been uh, received their testing back and are looking to be in good shape. Your social distancing uh, amongst the members of your group, as well as the locations that you're going. Um, you know, practicing washing your hands, wearing your masks, um, sanitizing, all of those things um, that, you know, most of these places you should be able to get to on foot, by bike, or public transportation, which I do kind of give you some hints to here and a couple of, couple more slides. Um, and I, you know, I, I guess I should also ask, um, I allotted for about 90 minutes. I don't need to take 90 minutes. I want to be respectful of your time. Last time I, I did this session, folks wanted me to slow down a little bit and give a little more insight as to some of the different things you could do at these different locations. I'm also, I can, I can also jump ahead to some other of these other things. Um, right now, the portion of the, of the session that I'm at is expanding upon those places I already highlighted. So please don't hesitate to say, hey, Rachel, this is great but I got a jet, I want some information. Um, if you're able to just kind of hang with me, that'd be cool. I think I've got some good stuff for you. Uh, but if you do have to jet, I understand as well. Cool, awesome. And I can be long-winded, so I'll try, to, I'll try to keep it going for y'all. All right, and then, yeah, this is a, kind of an image of North and South Monument Valley Park. Um, all right, Sonderman Park, I mentioned this before. Yeah, an oasis of wilderness within city limits. Um, great for wildlife viewing, solitude. There's really, there's never anyone there, which is really cool. That's unlike some of the other parks I mentioned. They're so, so popular that um, it can be hard to social distance in some of those places, like Garden of the Gods and things. Um, dirt, paved trails, vegetation, and yeah, it is the closest nature park that we have to campus. So 15 minute bike ride or a 30 minute walk. And so again, Colorado College is here. Uh, the shortest distance is to go and take Uenta, but I think it's nicer to go from Warner. You just walk down to Monument Valley, and there's a pedestrian bridge right here, and then all the way along here, 
that is just uh, community trails. You can even cut across right here to get to Sonderman Park. So about a 15 minute bike ride. That's probably about, yeah, about a 30 minute walk. Um, Memorial Park. Uh, this is another one of the larger um, community park locations. A lot of folks use it as a running place. There's a nice loop around the, the, um, the, the lake there. Um, normally, that's where we would encourage folks go to do some paddling, so stand-up paddleboarding, uh, kayaking. Uh, but at the moment, there is an algae that is um, um, not great for humans or pets. And so they have said that paddling or going on the water is not allowed at this time. So hopefully that'll clear up and they'll get that taken care of. Um, so, so don't go in the water right now, uh, but you can always check for those conditions. Um, they've got a skate park there, which is super cool. Uh, you're allowed to fish. And then I mentioned the paddle boarding and it's within three miles of campus, uh, bike, bus, or car. Um, we have heard of students, especially first years or um, upperclassmen that don't have access to vehicles. Um, utilizing Lyft or Uber, again, that's something that you should uh, assess for yourself uh, with public transportation as well, as far as how best practices for cleaning and all of that. But um, it's also home for the Labor Day liftoff. So uh, if you don't have plans for next, not, is it next Monday? The following Monday, I think. Whenever Labor Day, Coming up, Labor Day, um, there's gonna be probably 60 to 80 hot air balloons that are gonna lift off. And it's just really cool to see. Uh, so you can get down there and the bottom photo, you can see how big the, the water is. So the biggest, uh, biggest lake that we have right here within the Colorado Springs area. All right, and then as far as get there, you got campus again, you just kind of follow along cash, you jump on, this is the kind of Shooks run. That's a section of um, kind of commuter trail, and then you can get over to Memorial Park, got the skate park, and again, there's a nice um, paved pathway that goes all the way around that a lot of people like to use for biking, uh, and, or for, excuse me, for running, running laps. Uh, Palmer Park, this is one of those uh, in the northeast, kind of central part of Colorado Springs, really great spot for mountain biking. Um, it's a little more, more arid. There's not a lot of trees, um, really rocky, um, great for, you know, hiking, uh, as well, uh, all ability levels. And yeah, it's about a 30 minute bike ride. There is a bus route that gets you pretty close again, or you can utilize a vehicle. Mentioned, um, all these locations have a variety of different difficulty levels. So, uh, if Colorado College is kind of in, you know, southwest of here, this is probably one of these two uh, trailheads would be where you would, you'd aim for. And there's going to be a mixture of um, green is more of the beginner entry level trails, uh, blue is intermediate, and then black is uh, more advanced. And that's just based on the technicality. This is a mountain biking colored map. Uh, that's what the, the colors are in regards to mountain biking. So you may be a beginner hiker and you can travel on a black. That shouldn't be a problem. Just note it is going to be more rocky, bigger steps. There may be some places that you need to use your hands uh, for balance as well. And this is how you can get to Palmer Park. All right, Garden of the Gods. Um, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. It, it makes sense why it's a national natural landmark. And the, if you haven't had a chance to go, um, I think most of the time when people go, they first just drive the loop. But if you can find a way to get there, not be in a car, walk around through the trails, there's a lot of really great fun. Um, there's the, the, the popular paved trails, but then there's a lot of dirt trails that you can get off the beaten path and see some really cool things. Um, We've, in the past, we've, we've ran a lot of watercoloring trips here. People really like that. We've done uh, like flashlight tag in Garden of the Gods. Uh, lots of just kind of fun, creative ways to, to get out and explore your backyard. And again, kind of in relation to Colorado College, um, this, this map we put together so that if you were biking, you would be following um, 
like greenway trails so paved or like pedestrian trails. You didn't have to be on roadway. Um, it is a shorter distance if you just walked along Uenta Street, but um, that's the roadway. I mean, there's sidewalks, but it's not as, it's not as, I don't know, feeling like you're out of the city as if you were to take kind of these pathways here. Um, and then Red Rock Canyon open space. So this is the same map we just referenced for Garden of the Gods, but instead of going north to Garden of the Gods, Red Rock Canyon open space is right down here. Um, and, you know, I would say I agree that for many, it's our best kept secret. A lot of people are very familiar with Garden of the Gods and that's where they go. Um, Red Rock Canyon open space is becoming more and more popular, but as you can tell on this map, it just looks like a gray open blah. Like it, it, whereas all the other parks that we've been highlighting are green. So if there's folks that are looking for areas to go, it's kind of a it's kind of a trick to look for where are the where are the green spaces. Well, Red Rock Canyon Open Space it is a park, but it's not green, so some folks might not be aware that that's a good spot to go. Um, and almost everything that you have in Garden of the Gods you can do in Red Rock Canyon Open Space. And here are some more, just super cool. There's the if you recall the picture I showed earlier with the little pond and the uh, and the purple flowers. The parking lot is right over here and you can walk up over over this way and there's tons of different loops so you can get a lot of mileage in uh, with actually not being that far from the main trailhead. Um, and here's similar, this, this is the, the map, the main trailhead. Uh, there's a parking lot up here as well as here. Uh, and here, and all, all the loops I was mentioning before. I also previously talked about how you can get the section 16 area, which there's, um, in, if you recall, Bear Creek connects to section 16, which connects to Red Rock Canyon open space. You can do that loop kind of vice versa, which could be kind of fun if you wanted to make a really big day out of it. And then we have kind of our color coding as well. Um, I love to do a lot of um, orienteering, um, navigation practice, and Red Rock Canyon Open Space is a cool way to do that. You can see the contour lines uh, the, that can help give you the, the shape of the landscape. Uh, so I'll be doing some info sessions on um, clinics on learning how to get into adventure racing, if that's something that's of interest. Uh, if you've heard of Eco Challenge, which has been airing on Amazon Prime. It's a very, uh, 50, about 17 years ago, it was a very, very big um, adventure race event and it's had a resur resurgence. And adventure racing is my sport of choice. So um, someone I know had asked that previously and I wanted to kind of throw that in there. All right, and then North Cheyenne Canyon, um, this is further Southwest. It, is a little more challenging to get to in regards to just you know on foot or bike going from campus um, but if you can get there um, it does lead into some some really cool uh, you know there's rock climbing great hiking you can get to waterfalls um, the seven uh, seven falls seven bridges all of the really cool um, landforms it's it's kind of a, another hidden secret as well and how do you get there? So in comparison, this is that Bear Creek area I was telling you about. And so if you come down further, this road is showing you as if you took through I-25. So if you were gonna be um, traveling on foot or by bike, you'd wanna try and skirt along these roadways here. Um, at this time, there isn't really a great like pedestrian pathway that gets you to North Cheyenne Canyon. Um, but there are a lot of great, you can see very extensive um, Stratton open space. This is North Cheyenne Canyon itself. There's some cool peaks that you can climb, Mount Cutler, Muskoko, uh, Helen Hunt Falls. It, it, it takes a little bit of you know, effort to get up here, but it's well worth it. You'll, you'll reap the reward for sure. All right. Um, what can I do there and how to get there? We kind of talked about a little bit. All right, 
So now that we've enticed you with some of the awesome locations within Colorado Springs, um, how, how do we make sure that we can get there as appropriate? Um, anytime before you go out, even if it's just a quick jaunt along Monument Valley Park, um, plan what you're doing and where you're going um, and communicate that out to others, uh, especially if you're going to go venture on your own. Um, Taking consideration the weather, the time of day, um, we have surprise storms that come through, especially in the afternoons. Um, so planning accordingly, make sure you can account for how much elevation you might gain or lose, your mileage, what your energy level is. Um, acquire necessary equipment that you would need. So if it's gonna start to get colder or darker, you might wanna have some layers uh, or our headlamp or a light source of some kind. Um, if you're doing a specific activity, you know you want a mountain bike, it would be helpful if you had a mountain bike or had access to one, if you're gonna be fishing, etc. cetera. Um, and then, yeah, I said communicate your plan and then have fun. Um, as far as who to communicate that plan to, I would, you know, someone you trust, someone that's local, um, that could be your roommate, uh, your RLC, um, you can let one of us know. Um, that's not something that students typically do is tell outdoor education, but um, I'd be happy if you were like, hey, I'm gonna go on this, this jaunt and I, I think I'll be back by this time. This is where I'm going, this is what I'm doing, but hey, if you don't hear from me, maybe let someone know. Um, that's kind of the things, you know, cell phones die. If you're biking, you get a flat tire, whatever. We just wanna be sure that you're taken care of. All right, now let's talk a little bit more re about resources. So I, I just kind of talked a lot at you about different locations that I would recommend checking out, but within each of those areas, you can go further. Alltrails.com is really great for um, tra trails. All, all trails, you can search for uh, difficulty, length, um, region, type, rating. So, um, this is not an extensive list, but it is pretty thorough, and you can look for wherever you are. I know, Andrew, I believe you said that you're, you're not in the Colorado Springs area at the moment. This might be true for some, uh, some others of you as well. Um, you can type in your search location, and you can say, you know, I, want, I know I want to go on an activity that's no more than five miles, and I want to do a loop, and I... I want it to be at least four stars. And then you can kind of zoom in and find some of these locations that aligns with what you were looking for. And it can tell you, uh, it is, there are free, you could log in. Let me just go ahead and log in. <laughs> there we go. And then it's gonna give you more information. It's gonna show you your elevation gain loss. Um, it'll show you some photos if you want. You can see more information. So this can be a really cool tool to reference um, and figure out what type of activities. It'll give you the weather. Um, yeah, so keep that, keep that one in mind. Uh, Trail Forks is really great for mountain biking. Uh, it's very similar to all trails, but with a uh, mountain biking focus. So you can, same thing, look for different characteristics that you're looking for, but you know that you wanna um, buy trail difficulty, you can do all sorts of different filters and um, kind of decide and you can look to say, you know, I, I'm not looking for anything technical, I just wanna go for a nice little cruise, uh, I'll look for these kind of green, um, green um, trails that are listed here. And then if uh, rock climbing is something that's in your purview, be it now or in the future, um, Colorado Springs, so Mountain Project has a list of um, all sorts of different climbing routes and how to get there, where to park, the difficulty level, all those types of things. Um, rock climbing is definitely an activity that you should not do. I would encourage you don't climb alone. Um, bouldering might, you might be able to climb alone, but it's more fun to be with friends. And, um, if you haven't climbed before, there's a lot of technical systems that come into play. 
So I would encourage instead of venturing off on your own to see about um, signing up for one of our upcoming trips that we plan on hosting for climbing. Um, or there is uh, the Cairo College um, Climbers Coalition. And uh, there's a lot of students that love to take other students out climbing as well. Again, social distancing, everything that I'm sharing with you, always wear kind of the, the COVID lens of how can I participate and keep myself as safe as possible at the same time. So, all right. And then I talked about weather considerations. So yeah, it's really notorious in our region for weather to change fast. And so being protected uh, specifically from sun and precipitation and then uh, temperature changes. So being higher elevation, especially if you're not as uh, uh, adjusted to it yet, we're very dry region. So sunscreen, chapsticks, sunglasses, really important hats, long sleeves. I wear long sleeves almost all year round because it's that's just, it, I can't put sunscreen on often enough for myself. Um, and then layers. I always make sure I have a couple layers um, to help me regulate my body temperature uh, because sometimes you don't think about it being that you get cold, but it's things like wind or if it rains that that cools your body down really quickly. So even if it's as simple as having, um, you know, a, a long sleeve shirt to bring along with you, uh, it doesn't weigh all that much and you'll be really happy you have it. Um, if you're going to be uh, recreating as it becomes fall and winter, you'll want to have more, you know, hat, gloves, uh, additional layers. Um, and if you don't own a lot of these items like gloves or um, uh, warmer layers or rain jackets, those are things that you could rent from the gear house. Uh, speaking of gear, getting equipped, um, it depends on what you're doing, how long you're going, uh, where you're going to fine tune what you should bring with you. There's no exact science to it. It's what do you need to be successful? What do you need to, to sustain what you're doing and be as comfortable as you want? Um, so at the minimum, I would make sure that you, you think about your first aid, uh, even if that's just bringing along a Band-Aid um, or picking up a first aid kit from outdoor education. Um, of course, it, it's very helpful if you have training to know how to utilize the equipment that you're carrying with you. Uh, with Outdoor Ed, we offer a Wilderness First Responder course each year. We're looking to host that during half block this year. Uh, we may also host it again in the, during spring break or uh, summer. Uh, I'd also, we also do uh, CPR classes. Um, and we're also happy to just help walk through some of the things that you might want to carry with you as well. Um, wear proper footwear for the activity you're doing, um, know where you're going. So navigation, maybe that's that you just have it plugged into your phone. If it's somewhere local, uh, if it's somewhere that you might, you know, it might be further away, uh, you need, you know, you want to read the topography. So you want a trail map, um, or you're in a place that you can't trust your phone. You don't have service. Your phone might die. Um, we have maps that you can rent at the gear house as well. Um, carry some sort of vessel to carry all the other goodies with you, your water, snacks, illumination, layers, um, and having a reliable communication device is key. So you don't need to have anything fancy as far as like the bag or the pack. It could be a fanny pack. It can be your book bag. Uh, it could be, you know, a hooded sweatshirt that you have wrapped around your waist and you can put, fit things in. Um, Obviously, the, the longer trip you're going, the more things you're carrying, you'd be more comfortable carrying a, a bigger, bigger pack. But make do with what you have. Don't, don't not try things because you feel you don't have the, the, the go-to items, if you will. Um, the outdoors can be really intimidating. You see a lot of, you know, the movies and media and whatnot where people always have the flashiest gear you know we all we all put on a backpack for the first time at some point we've all learned to tie our shoes at one point if you've ridden a bike you had to you had to learn at one point or another so um don't don't get caught up in the hype of if i don't have the latest greatest then i can't do the activity because that would that'd be really unfortunate to hold yourself back from doing some really cool things um communicating your trip plan i talked about this before 
So someone that you trust, it's a safety precaution. Hopefully you never need to use it, but you'll be so glad you did. So your plan should include where you're going uh, and what your route is, um, when you, what you're gonna be doing, whether or not there's anyone with you, what your plan is for return, if you have any backup options, say you wanted to go to this trailhead, but there's construction, so you had to go to a different one, um, you wanna communicate that and update notifications. You know, let, if you're telling someone that what your plan is, make sure when you get back, you let them know you're back. Otherwise they might start to get a little worried because you asked them to be in case they didn't hear from you. So be sure that you do that. Okay, so how do you get there? Coming back, Eve, I think you had asked this question before, like how do we, how do we get there? Okay, I'm, I'm excited, I wanna go do some things, I wanna get outdoors, but I'm on campus or wherever I am, how do I get there? The majority of everything that I mentioned is gonna be walk, walk or bike. Um, there is public transportation, um, car, Uber, Lyft. Again, that's kind of a cost thing, you know, walking. If you have the time and you're able to, you can walk to any of these locations. It just might take you a little bit more to get there. Um, biking, if you don't have access to a bike, uh, we have a great community partner with Pike Ride. Uh, those are the white e-bikes that are locked up uh, around town. And I'll show you a link here more so you can learn more about Pike Ride. Um, so um, you know, so you've decided you want to walk somewhere, bike somewhere. How do you go about getting there? Uh, I wanted to share with you some great resources for maps. Some of this information is overwhelming. Don't be overwhelmed with all the routes that are you're going to see here. But this is a an interactive map. You can see bike route, lane, shoulder, shared lane, urban trail, park trails, whatever. What I want you to get out of this right now is that there are a lot of ways that are a lot of, lot of ways that you can get places, lots of routes that are friendly to walking and bicycles. So what I want you to take away from this little shot here, there's also these printable maps. So you can look at like downtown. How do I get from campus downtown? Maybe you, you wanna recreate and you, you're just trying to get to Sonderman Park or you're trying to get to Memorial Park or to Bear Creek Park. You can look from campus and kind of follow, see, anticipated lanes. Yep, they put those lanes in. That goes straight through, that's Cascade. Uh, that was something they added a couple years ago. So that way you don't have to worry about traffic nearly as much. These orange and um, green, so paved urban trails versus the, the kind of gravel unpaved trails. And that can lead you from what I talked about. Sometimes you have to get from campus to them, but once you're on them, you can cruise and get pretty close to the location you're trying to get to. America Beauty of the Park, this is what I mentioned before. It has that big loop-de-loop -loop near the Olympic Museum. Um, so reference the, that as well. And there are, excuse me, there's some additional southeast and to the west. So further ways how it sprawls out. Then the urban trails map. This just more specifically um, gets you to the map resources. Come on, scroll down. That are more of those paved, paved trail systems. So the different kind of tiers um, so it's really cool. I live about 10 miles from campus. I live about, I live right about here. And the most direct route would be for me to drive this way to come down to campus. But I love to bike if I can. And if I have the time, I can just cruise along this greenway. So this is mostly paved the whole way. And that can get me down right down to campus. And that's pretty sweet. Um, so that's, if I were to walk this, I think that'd be maybe like a, a two hour walk, but I live, my, my coworkers say I live in Canada. I live way up north in comparison to they live a little bit closer to campus. All right. And then Pike Ride for CC students. So um, again, Pike Ride is a community e-bike, so electronic assist bike. Uh, so you don't have to be, it's, it's, it's weird. You, you barely pedal and, and you just kind of zoom. You just kind of take off. So you can cover distance a lot quicker with very little energy. 
So if you're like, wow, it's going to take me a 20 minute bike ride to get to this location. Will I have the energy to do the activity I want? That's where the e assist bikes are really cool. Um, and what's awesome with Colorado College is that uh, for students that have demonstrated need, uh, so financial aid packages, um, you can have your pike ride costs waived. Um, and it is a low cost overall, um, which, is, which is pretty, pretty neat. Um, there's different plans on whether you pay by the, the minute or the day. Um, pay as you go, 24 hours. So depending on what it is that you want to do, um, you can reference all those different plans. And then I also want to share with you the map of the coverage area. The pike ride bikes can go anywhere you want them to go, but you can only park them within this boundary. Okay, so um, and the PRs, if you can see those here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Those are pike ride stations. So where bikes are, you, you can park them anywhere within the boundary, but they will relocate bikes to pike ride stations if there aren't any there. So we've got quite a few on campus. Um, so if you wanted to, to check one out from the library and then you can, you know, cruise along and you want to go to, you know, down to Old Colorado Springs, um, or Old Colorado City, excuse me. You could come down here, check out Bancroft Park. Uh, Red Rock Canyon Open Space is right over here. So you could take the pike ride to Red Rock Canyon Open Space, but you can't park it there. If you were to park it, your cost is gonna to continue to accrue your minutes until you return that bike. If you bought a day pass and you parked it, you should be able to get that bike again and come back into this region, assuming the bike's still there. Um, if you do take the, a bike outside of here and you park it and you don't bring it back, that's where the costs uh, creep up. It's $20 um, if they have to relocate the bike. So what I'm getting at is if you wanna cut some distance, say you wanna go to Bear Creek, you check out a pike, or a pike ride, you ride to here, you park that bike, or even down to here, you park it, as long as you park it to a, a, some sort of a solid structure, uh, a bike rack, a light pole, something, you could leave that bike here, and then you can on foot walk your way to Bear Creek Park. That's kind of a way that you can work around it. And then when you come back, hopefully that bike's either still there, or you know you can go get another bike pretty close by at one of these other stations. So um, I know they're working on extending their boundaries. Uh, they're trying to make it further up into Manitou Springs area, which would get you access to Garden of the Gods, Red Rock Canyon Open Space, the Manitou Incline, um, all those types of things. So Pike Ride is, is really cool, but you do have to be aware of the boundaries, okay? I don't want you to get any un, uh, unexpected costs because you parked it just outside of where it was supposed to be parked. And it's got an app and everything, so it should tell you whether or not you're in the, the right spot. All right, cool. And then public transportation. So the Mountain Metro bus and then Lyft and Uber. Um, I'll, send, I'll send you all this, the, these slides so you have these links. I won't go into these, but the Mountain Metro bus. Um, we've got a bus stop right, right nearby, um, outdoor education. If I go to the system map, again, this is overwhelming. This is like the entire bus route. And sometimes bus routes are a little hard to read because they're not giving you the other landscapes um, or land, landmarks, excuse me. Uh, this is the corner of um, Cache in Nevada. So right nearby where outdoor education is. And this is the main uh, station, okay? So if you can just walk downtown or pike ride downtown, you can get to the main station and it can take you, you can get on a bus that'll take you almost to any of these parks that we talked about or pretty darn close to them. Um, so it does take a little bit of figuring out the timing. Buses only come every 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes. Um, but if you're trying to get a little further off campus and you can time it out right, 
um, figuring out public transportation, it can get you to, to really expand the zone of where you can travel. And then again, yeah, Lyft and Uber. Um, if you know you wanna get somewhere, a lot of the places that I mentioned are within a 15, 20 minute drive. Um, if you do have the uh, ability and it's more cost effective for you to, to do that, that route, um, most all these places I mentioned, you could easily get to within five to $15 if you were to do a, a, an Uber or Lyft ride. Okay. I did lots and lots of talking. I was uh, trying to read y'all's faces and cover um, a lot of information. I didn't see any other questions kind of come up, but I want to, let me see, um, learn more about our, so I guess a little plugs, I'll stop screen sharing now so I can see all your faces a little bit better. Cool. Um, so I would encourage tomorrow at 1215 uh, Mountain Time, we will have our Blockly meeting with, so every, every block outdoor education, we have a meeting to overview of what our program is, the upcoming opportunities, the trips we're running, how to get involved, um, all of those things. So 1215, um, that link has been communicated in the Student Digest. If you didn't see it today, you'll look for it again tomorrow. Uh, join in on that. Um, and that'll give a bigger overview of what the year looks like for outdoor education this year. And it'll be led by the director of our program. I'll be there as well. Um, how, to, how to enter into outdoor experiences. You know, I think we wanna make the outdoors as accessible as possible to everyone. Again, um, this year might be a little more challenging because we're not sure how many trips that we're gonna be able to run. Um, I'm leading a trip on Thursday. It's a, uh, a day hiking. It's a geocaching hiking trip along Monument Valley. Uh, if you're not familiar with geocaching, it's, um, oh, are you familiar with Pokemon Go? Okay, okay. So geocaching uh, predates Pokemon Go, but it's kind of that idea of you have technology, you're hiking along, and you're trying to find hidden treasures. Um, and Unlike Pokemon Go, where it's just virtual and it just appears or whatnot, um, geocaches are actual little hidden caches, little things that are hidden throughout. And there's over like a thousand within the Colorado Springs area alone. So we're going to see if we can find some of those. Sometimes they're hidden in little, um, little pill bottle boxes and hidden under rocks or, or whatever, and they give you clues. So it's kind of fun. Um, so we've got that hike scheduled for Thursday. I'm also leading a stand-up paddleboarding trip um next wednesday um the the geocaching trip is open on summit now the stand-up paddleboard trip um and some others we're supposed to get those up onto summit uh before the end of the week so be on the lookout there um how to get involved with our program i would encourage that you sign up for the outdoor education listserv so we know that we all are bombarded with e more emails than we ever could want. And so we try to uh, funnel most of our communications to the outdoor education listserv. Um, if you want to be added to that listserv, I can add you after this meeting to make sure that you're on there. Um, so just uh, throw your, your email in the chat just to be sure that I've, I've got, you, got it and I will put it in the, uh, put you in the listserv. Um, and so that's when we promote our uh, all of our upcoming trips and trainings and things. What's cool about our program is a lot of those trips and trainings are pro uh, proposed by students. And so we don't necessarily have a full semester schedule planned out all at once. It's something where a student may come up and they're like, oh, I'm interested in leading uh, a, a biking trip and I want to do it in two weeks. And so we say, okay, we'll help you get it. And then once it's ready, we promote it out to campus. And we use the listserv to do that. So um, that's the best way for us to communicate to you all what we've got going on. Um, outdoor areas uh, close to Colorado Springs. I hope I covered a good number of that. Again, there's a lot more. I just covered some of the, uh, some of the more popular ones. Um, talk about how to get involved with outdoor education this year. And um, kind of the question regarding support for outdoor experiences. Um, so within our program, we have, uh, we, we at, 
I go, keep going back to saying we want everyone, anyone and everyone that wants to get in the outdoors, we wanna make the outdoors accessible to you. Uh, we don't want cost to be a barrier. That's why with our rentals, they're little to no cost. Um, all of our trips are you know, highly subsidized. I think most of our trips this year are just gonna be free just because most of them are local. Um, we do have some different programs where you can apply for uh, funding to, to support your own um, outdoor recreation opportunities. So the, the Rick Kellogg grant, so the Rick Kellogg Memorial Fund is to, yeah, to support students that want to um, further their outdoor passions. And um, with the goal that in time you participate in a Rick Kellogg expedition, which is an extended trip. Um, we have a six day, I think minimum six day option, and then there's a minimum 12 day option um, or longer. And you know, that could be sea kayaking in Alaska, that could be you know, rock climbing uh, in the remote Alpine in California, it could be through hiking the Colorado Trail. It can be as long as you meet certain requirements of your proposed plan down the, down the road. Um, we have funding in the uh, intermittent to help you build up those skills. So if you wanted to do mountaineering, you need to take a, a crevasse rescue training. Uh, you can apply for funding to help support your crevasse rescue training, for example. Um, we also have trip by trip financial aid. I mentioned most of our trips are gonna be no cost this year anyhow, um, but if we do have trips or trainings that you're interested in and you're concerned about the, the cost uh, to be able to do that, we have on Summit an ongoing financial aid application that um, we rarely ever say no. It's more of we wanna see that you put in, you put in the effort um, and we wanna know that, 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 that those funds are gonna help be, uh, provide an impactful experience for you. Uh, so um, I hope that helps to answer most of the questions. Um, if, if it was something like I want to go on my own personal um, weekend camping trip, will you help pay for my camping fees? No, we don't do things like that. Um, but if it does fall in line with some of the things that I mentioned already, um, we can help talk through a little bit more on what that might look like. Um, specific questions to the Rick Kellogg Memorial Fund because it goes a lot deeper than what I barely, barely just touched the surface on. Uh, Kate Macklin in our program, she's our coordinator. Uh, she is um, the go-to person for that. But you can check out our website and learn more. And I know we're gonna talk a lot more about that in our meeting tomorrow. Uh, just more of the opportunities within outdoor education, so that'll be touched upon. All right, what questions, in addition, I, th I think I covered all the questions that y'all had from the start. Eve, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so I guess on Summit, are those events all kind of labeled for like how much experience you would need? Like if I have no experience doing like stand-up paddle boarding, could I like still go on that trip that's happening? Absolutely. I'd say the majority, like 90% of the trips that we run are designed so that we can um, welcome students with all ability levels, all experience levels, and you can still enjoy it. Um, there, we may do some trips that are like climbing a 14,000 foot peak or a 14er. We've done some trips where you do multiples of those in a day. Um, we will put in our description that you know prior experience at altitude and long days um, are encouraged. Uh, when we do backcountry ski trips, we want an, we want students to have had experience skiing because we want you to be successful. We don't want anyone to go into a situation where they might not be ready for. Maybe the following year or the year after. Maybe that would be something if it's what you wanted to work towards. We can help you get there. Does that help? I envision like even like our rock climbing trips, most, I mean, most things, you know, we, we're in a really cool place. We can do a lot of really cool outdoor activities. And even if folks do come in with experience, you probably don't have experience in all the different types of activities that you can engage in. So I think everyone is a beginner at some sort of thing at some point in time or another. 
What other questions? Yeah, um, what's that race that's upcoming? There's like yeah. a race. Yeah. So um, there'll be an upcoming, I'm gonna do a clinic series on adventure racing. We don't have an official race planned. Um, last year, I took a group of 15, no, sorry, eight, eight or nine students. I took a group and we did do an adventure race. Um, unfortunately with COVID, that race has not been, uh, it's been canceled for this year. Um, but I've worked really close with the race directors and that's something that we want to do for students again. Um, adventure racing, which is my, my sport. I'm very passionate about it. It is, it, it it's a team based sport, which incorporates navigation to find different checkpoints within a certain region. Um, there are flags that are hanging and you have to go and find them. Um, and you travel to those checkpoints by a variety of dis different disciplines. Uh, and it's a certain time period. So if there's a six hour race, you have six hours to try and find as many checkpoints as possible. And you might have to find some of them while biking some of them while paddling, some of them while, while, you know, trekking, walking, uh, some of them you have to rappel down to get to, or to ascend up to get to. Um, so, and it's, it's fun because you've got this competitive element. It's like the ultimate scavenger hunt and you, you, you do it together with, you know, your a team of people, the camaraderie, you rely on one another. Um, and there are races that are as short as three or four hours. And there are races that are 10 to 12 days um, where you're just going the entire time. Um, I do a lot of what are called sprint races. Those are up to about 12 to 24 hours. And I'm hoping personally, like my own personal venture is I'm, I'm trying to do the expeditionary races, which are three plus days in length and they're all over the world. Um, but we're in a really cool region that year round we can do all of the activities that I mentioned that's our, that are in adventure racing. Um, and since there's some excitement with the eco challenge series, it's, it's called the world's toughest race is the TV show. Uh, it's on Amazon prime and that is featuring a 10 or 11 day adventure race in Fiji. Um, that's what, that's what I was referencing when I was promoting on social media our um that we'll be doing a, a clinic series on you know how to navigate how to you know we'll do we'll do some bike stuff we'll do things like that so um yeah i'm looking forward to putting that together if that's of interest to anyone i'll be sure to let you know when that opens up so hopefully it doesn't fill up if you're interested in signing up for it What other thoughts? Did you feel that the information I shared with you was helpful? Do you feel you kind of met some of the goals that you wanted from this session? Cool, awesome. Sometimes it's hard to read, read faces, so thank you for, for giving me some of the visuals. Um, yeah, so as far as our program, normally we, would have our, our entire office staff in our building and we would welcome drop-ins anytime, come pick our brain. I know it feels weird sometimes to email someone you haven't really met in person or say like, hey, can we schedule a meeting? But that's what we would love to do. If you have a trip in mind, you're like, oh, I really like the idea of going to um, North Shine Canyon. Rachel, could I connect with you and can we talk through like, what could be the route? I, I'm willing to take a bus and then get a pike ride and then walk. But can you help me think through what that might look like? We would love to. I would much rather connect with you all than look at spreadsheets and things. So um, help me help you if you've got some, uh, some outdoor ventures that you'd, you'd like to partake in, okay? Cool. Awesome. Well, if there aren't any additional questions, we'll, we'll wrap this up a little bit early. Um, thank you again for, for coming. If there's anything any of us can do with Outdoor Ed, 
let us know. We would love, love to help. Oh, another question. Yes. I just remembered. So is, um, you know, there are like those aerial silk things. Yeah. Is that part of outdoor ed? Yes. Okay. When will like classes for that start up? Great question. So the, um, to uh, outdoor education programming, we have trips, we have trainings, we have on-campus facilities. I mentioned that I oversee the gear house and the bike co-op, um, but we also have the climbing gym and our paddling sessions are also on campus. Um, the climbing gym, similar to the gear house and the co-op, is we can't run those facilities until we have our student employees back. And they're not, most of them are not back until block two. And so our goal, and then once they're back, we need to do staff training, da, 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 da. So our goal is that all of our facilities reopen mid to late block two, hopefully sooner, okay? If we can open sooner, we will, but our, our goal is mid late block two. Um, yeah, does that help? All right. Um, Cool. I'm going to stop recording.